Good afternoon, everyone. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Are you enjoying yourself? Yes. Good, good, good. You know, the only thing I can wish for now is that I was a poet. Because this morning I was so mesmerized. Only if I was a poet, I would do my talk much better. Nevertheless, they've introduced me. I'm Jabum Tweni. I'm a social hacker, and I come from rock. You know, when we talk about power, we know that power is paradoxical. You know, power can destroy, power can build. And I'm sure many of you, when you hear the words power of hacking, the first thought that comes into your mind is that thought of destructive power. You know, that power that is akin to some African magic. You know, witchcraft. And sometimes that power that is prone to load shedding, isn't it? But that's not the power that I'm talking about. But if you are thinking like that, you are definitely forgiven. And you are forgiven for a simple reason. Is that, you know, our society, the general perception is that hacking is about some criminal activity. Isn't it? You know, when you think about the hacker, you think about someone who is sitting somewhere in the dark places trying to break into your computer, corrupt your files, and steal your stuff. You are thinking about someone who is sitting somewhere in Asia, you know, trying to break into your bank and steal your money. Nowadays, you are even thinking about someone probably in Sunnyside is sending you some bogus message and is trying to, you know, steal your airtime, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, last week I was watching a documentary. It was so interesting when I even learned that, you know, a guy was staying on the street, they pickpocket people's cell phones and they go into the corner and wipe them. Those guys are called hackers as well. I was so surprised. The actual truth is, those are not hackers. Those are pure criminals. That's what they are. You know, it's just like when you jumpstart a car, won't make you a mechanic. Breaking into a computer does not make you a hacker. And that's one thing you need to be aware of. And to the real hackers, these are just, you know, lazy and attention-seeking crackers. That's what we call them. One thing that we miss as a community when we think about hacking is that just as there are bad, good, and probably ugly politicians, they are also good hackers. We can think of good hackers such as Steve Jobs. I don't know whether many of you can recognize him on that picture. We can think about Bill Gates. We know the good that they've done to the world. You know, I'm presenting this. It's all because of them. That is why you can see this. You know, good hackers subscribe to a hacker ethic and culture. And a lot of people have written about this. You know, we talk about Eric Raymond, we talk about Steve Levy, the Himmerman, they have written about the hacker ethic. And a real hacker is someone who is passionate and is delighted about solving practical problems. The previous presentation sort of laid the foundation. You know, if you are passionate about solving problems, and probably you can even solve this sum by changing one thing, then you are a hacker. The only thing, you just have to go out of your comfort zone and the status quo. For example, if you change one plus that to a four, that whole sum is correct. Isn't it so? I think you are dumbstruck. I'm getting there. <laughs> <coughs> Hackers are about the sharing spirit. In other words, they believe in sharing the problems that they've solved. And for a simple reason, because they believe that when a problem is solved, it should go and solve other problems. And they believe that when a problem is solved, uh, it should not be solved a number of times. That's what hackers are. They're in the sharing spirit. As we say, sharing is caring. That's who we are. You know, we believe in openness. Those are the hackers, not crackers. Okay? Crackers, they believe in working in the dungeon. We believe working in the open. And that is why many of the hackers will share their work. It's not only about open source, but they are also open you know, to criticism. They are open to change. That is why they are able to put their solutions out there and be able you know, for other people to improve on them. But one important thing about hackers as well that you might not be aware of is that they believe in freedom of participation. What do I mean by that? Hacking is not only about computers. One thing that many of you might not know is that hacking actually predates computers. It came way before computers came into being. So, what does this mean? Anyone in any domain can actually be a hacker, as long as they have, they have the skill to solve problems. 
And that is why, you know, when you are a hacker, you are not judged by some bogus criteria, you know, meaning your qualification, which can be faked, we know that, okay? <laughs> or your gender, which can be changed, your race, and all those other kind of things. Hacking, you are only judged by hacking, by solving problems. The most important thing about hackers as well, it's not about themselves, but it's about the community. In other words, they strive and excel when they work with communities to actually solve problems. Problems that will impact communities. Hackers are not the people who will complain about some other issues they are not clued up about. They are concerned about providing solutions. They don't worry about e-tolls. <laughs> One thing about hackers is that Unlike many of us who would work so hard to drive a big car and make a lot of money so that we are envied by our friends, hackers work so hard, and most of the time they work for free, to be valued by their peers, to be valued by their communities. Those are the real hackers. Not those guys who are seeking attention. I'm talking about the crackers who, be, who break into other people's computers. Of course, at this time you are dumbstruck. I can even see your face. You are saying, whoa. Where did this guy come from? How can hackers have such good characteristics? Are these now the new Mandelas and the Mother Teresas of today? Where do we find these guys? Because we have never seen them. The media, of course, will tell you about the hackers you know, who go into some systems of the bank and steal money. But these hackers are everywhere. They are amongst us. They stay with us. Of course, even the criminals stay with us, of course. And we find them in a lot of places. You know, many of you would know hackers work quite a lot, you know, in cybersecurity, where they make sure that your data is safe on the internet, your information is not leaked into some other places. They do quite a lot of things. But those are not the hackers that I want to talk about. The hackers that I'm talking about are those ones that we find in places which we call hackathons. I'm sure many of you, you might have heard about them. But a hackathon is basically a marathon where people are hacking over a short period of time. And in this particular place, that's where we bring together ordinary people, like probably yourself, intelligent people like yourself, creative people, chaotic people like myself, and my leader here in front. Sometimes even, you know, very, very lazy people come to hack, uh, to hack. as long as they have the capacity to solve problems, they are there. Now, you know, we find these people in, an, in, in around 500 hackathons that are hosted around the world globally. This number is actually even higher now. You know, they work with about 20,000 young people, you know, in one term, for example, in the United States. And they work on a number of things, number of things. The social hacker that I'm talking about will hack on things that are solving social challenges. It can be issues of peace, issues of the environment, but of course, you know, many of them will sort of be into technology. But hacking is not only about that. What Claire presented previously, that's hacking, because what they do, they don't follow status quo, they do things differently. And that's what hackers do. There are very projects that these guys work on. Some of them as simple as the like button. The Facebook like button actually came from a hackathon. It was built by hackers. The internet that you use today, built by hackers. They obviously even work on big projects, like Google Person Finder, which is a project that was used quite heavily in Haiti, in Christchurch, you know, where there were disasters, where people use it to find their families who might be separated from one another. You might be asking yourself, okay, where are we going with this? One of our aspirations is that Prof. Mamdani once said, you cannot import a solution. You cannot take a design of a Swedish architect and go and build a house in Uganda. Isn't it? Because your solution needs to fit the local conditions. It must use local resources to respond to the local challenges. And that's what hacking is about. And in 2011, we joined the movement called Random Hacks of Kindness, which is about hacking for humanity. That's what we do. 
trying to address social issues using our skills. And, you know, there were about three of us when we started, and we, jo we, we organized some events, and there were about ten hackers who came, because many people, when they come to these events, some of them were excited that, oh, this weekend we are going to break into computers. And they were so surprised at the end of the weekend that, gee, there was no computer that was broken, there was work. Many of them have never come back again. <laughs> and we have grown, because now we have over 200 hackers that we work with, particularly young people from different universities, and we have four chapters that are growing in South Africa. We have the one in Pretoria, we have the one in Jersey, one in Devon, which is opening uh, in next week, and Cape Town as well. And the whole idea is about hacking for humanity, because that's what hacking is all about. But what we did, our objective was completely different from what they do up north. Our focus was providing an environment for our young people to learn. Because some of our young people struggle, for example, to get industry exposure. This was the platform to actually give to them to apply what they learned in class in practice. Because hacking is not a talk shop. It's about doing. It's about building stuff. And also it provided us with an opportunity to bring together industry people. People who are working hard, people who can give up their time to actually come mentor and coach these guys. Our other objective was to provide a platform to actually collaborate, build networks. It has been so fascinating that some of our platforms have actually been used for recruitment purposes. Some of the guys have been hired from the hackathons. Because within the hackathon, you can see if the guy is bluffing or not. Because that's where the work is done. You can have, you know, the fake qualification, but hacking is about doing. Once you do it, we are happy. You know, of course, the, the, the overall idea about hacking is that we have to build solutions, of course, using our skills because we are nerds and we are computer scientists and so on and so forth. We must build solutions that will help our communities. You know, we have, we have failed at some point. We have tried certain things that didn't work. We have started a project with some guys who thought we were going to break into computers. They fell along the way. It's always fine because we are open to that. Because our goal is not about popularity contest. It's about changing the world. Whether we change one person at a time or we change 20, that's not our concern. Our concern is we must solve practical problems. And that's what we do. And over the years, we have some successes. And some of the projects, you know, they started like a play but they have some serious impact. One of the projects, for example, we did, one of uh, my hacker is here, you know, he was the, 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 co the, 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 the lead developer on this. It's called Donate My Stuff. I'm sure many of you have your stuff in the garage that are gathering dust, your books, your old uniform that you used in the 1980s. It's just that you don't know who to give it to. And one of you, obviously, you don't even go to church, so you, don't, you, know, you don't even get a chance to dump it at the church. <laughs> now, this particular project, was meant to assist you. You can be at your lounge and you can find people who might need your stuff because you also don't want to just throw them away at the robot. Okay? That's what you wanted to do. So Donate My Stuff was trying to address that problem. It was adopted by one local radio station. One of the other great successes which we have had, of course we are latching on this one, we have worked with African Schools for Excellence. You know, African Schools for Excellence, they have changed the perception of education. They opened a private school in a township. Because many people believe that for good education to actually you know, prevail, it must be in some Potriter Street somewhere. <laughs> but these guys, they opened a private school in Sakani. And we've worked with them through House for Hack to develop very basic hacks. For example, applications that can teach these kids to read, because some of our kids can't read, teach these kids to write, and many, many other projects. Of course, as I've said, you know, we have, we have had successes and we have also failed, which is okay because hacking allows that. You know, those who succeed all the time are probably crooks. <laughs> of course, you know, I'm coming to the end of my talk now. One thing that you should pick up is that hacking is not about some criminal activity. Hacking is giving. And I'm sure you can see the light now is sort of shining. It's not low shading, right? The, the other one was load shedding because you were still sort of asleep. 
And because you have now, you know, your brain has been hacked, and I can see it. Some of you are concerned. Some of you are saying, whoa, we never thought of this. Find some more. And we want to encourage you, you know, to join us and use your skills to solve problems of your communities. Complaining won't really change the complaint. Just like worrying won't give you more days in your life. But it's about using your skills to solve problems. And hacking is not only about computer people. It's not only confined to software culture. But anyone can be a hacker. Whether you are a scientist, you are a marketing person, you know, you are a musician, you are doing art, you can hack. And if you don't like giving, because we know that there are people who don't like to do it, you can still open your own hack, hackathon to test your business ideas, because that is also allowed. That's what big companies in the US do and, and, and what we do as well sometimes. And while you're at it, you know, hackers are not really, that is why I call myself an average nerd, because a nerd tends to be very serious people. So while you're at it, you might as well take yourself a selfie. And with that, we are rocking out. Thank you very much for your audience.